It is God in the dawning, in the renewal, in the arrival, in the new day. We carry this flame into our midst as the symbol of the creativity of our faith. Don't look for holy and righteous men and women who wear halos and are ringed with light. You won't find many. Look instead at our neighbour. Look instead at the tired carers and worried parents. Look instead at ourselves and see in the eyes the saints of God. Today's St Columbus, today's St Magnuses, today's St Andrews, ordinary people with the greatest commandment ingrained in their souls, who intuitively love and share that love with and for the world. This platform is full of God's saints. May God's stillness and peace rest upon us. May God's presence permeate all our living. Amen.
A reading from Psalms. As for me, I'll always have hope and I will add to all your praises. My lips will proclaim your deeds of justice and salvation all day long, even though they are innumerable. O God, I will enter your mighty temple and there proclaim your justice. You taught me when I was young and I am still proclaiming your marvels. Now that I am old and grey, O God, do not desert me. Let me live to tell the coming generation about your strength and power. Your justice, O God, is higher than the heavens. You have done great things. Who is comparable to you? And so, on the lyre, I'll praise you, my ever-faithful God. I will play the harp in your honour, Holy One of Israel. My lips will sing for joy while I play for you. My whole being, which you have redeemed, will sing. And all day long, my tongue will speak of your beneficence.
in this second half of life that so many of us are now experiencing, we have the opportunity to shift from being an adult to becoming an elder. All previous civilizations in history have asked adults to become elders. So this concept is by no means new, but for us now, it is a part of a living miracle. Literally, billions of us will actually get the chance to become elders if we will but take that chance. Think for a moment of what the world will be like if that miracle and all the wonder, awe and good work it implies actually takes place. What does the word elder conjure up in your mind? Now, for the avoidance of doubt, I am not talking about church elders, members of a Kirk session, which perhaps in the past has muddied ecclesiastical waters in terms of a perceived suitability of some people. So the question is, are you an elder or just getting older? Becoming an elder requires consciousness and concentration, especially in our present century when, like so many other things, an elder's way is not clear-cut. If we were to take a starting definition, we can look up the word elder in a dictionary or on Wikipedia. And there we can see that elders are repositories of cultural knowledge and transmitters of that cultural information. Or alternatively, elders are thought of as reservoirs of certain skills that need to be passed on to younger people. To give you a couple of examples, in Sardinia, elders spend a part of their days passing knowledge of their particular trade or craft or profession to younger villagers. Again, in Japan, elders seek out opportunities to support and help their family and community members when asked. In many, many places, elders report having reasons to get up in the morning. And they are known in their communities as older people who are comfortable exploring and passing on their faith. Many elders report that they feel that mentoring is a crucial part of their sense of a higher purpose. So, as far as a definition might be, would it be fair to say an elder in our society is someone who exhibits these characteristics? Someone, for the sake of argument, is 50 or older. Someone who passes on specific work and wisdom and teaches it to others, while also providing wise counsel when needed. Someone who models life's purpose and maturity. In other words, fewer power struggles with others, more insightful respect and admiration of others, more drawing out of others' gifts. Someone who remains as physically and mentally active as possible. In other words, takes responsibility and control of any damaging body-mind practices and transforms them in themselves so that the body and the mind remain healthy, even as though they age. 
so that the elder can be in inverted commas of use and enjoy life for as long as possible. Again, someone who connects younger people and society to mysteries of success, compassion, freedom and faith. In other words, takes the risks of modelling both humility and self-confidence in the face of real life, while protecting others' rights to live their own way in their own mysteries. These are some of the characteristics, not all of them of course, that perhaps mark out an elder. And part of embracing the wonder of ageing is really taking hold of where we are as elders. It's a recognition that we cannot turn back the social clock. We live in an age where elderhood is rarely bestowed on us just because we're older as may have happened in the past. We know that our culture focuses more on young people and middle-aged journeys and we are challenged as elders to be visible. Of course, and we often do, we can complain about this or that or we can take our own responsibility for it and rebalance this course across all the generations. We can and perhaps we must concentrate so fully on what an elder is now today and we support one another in our thinking, in our acting, in our creating, in our serving of others and yes in our enjoying life visibly and in taking our place. This taking our place is part of the redefinition of age that we can make happen. By embracing the wonder of ageing, we can embrace a new role in the family or the community or a group in the marketplace and in the world in general. A life position we must not passively wait for people in today's society to give to us. So each time we maybe volunteer at a child's school or teach a youngster a craft or a skill, each time we provide insight to others or lead, guide and help younger people sustain life and vision, that is us being an elder. Becoming an elder means realising that a person can still act like a child regardless of their age and not an elder. A person can complain constantly, which an elder probably ought not to do if he or she is going to be respected as an elder. Again, a person can spend his or her last decades of life embroiled in power struggles with others, which an elder does not do. An older person can withdraw, withdraw from family and withdraw from community, but which an elder does not do. Ultimately, the glory, if that's not too strong a word, the glory of an elder is the choosing to take hold of freedom. And this kind of freedom is not about escape or escapism. Rather, it's the next stage of growth, the next mature kind of love. To become an elder in our society, as we know, is not as cut and dried as it was in the past or as it may be elsewhere or might have been in our heads. But it is a maturity on which family, community and even the spirit of our species 
depend. We light this candle in remembrance and hope to call to mind Magnus and Ronald and all the saints and all those dear to us who have gone before, especially those who have died in recent times, and as a sign of hope to future generations as yet unborn, Jesus said, I am the light of the world, whoever follows me shall not walk in darkness but shall have the light of life. prayer. Is this taking it too far? Too far from the familiar, the comfortable and predictable? Better the devil we know than risk uncharted territory. Bring back the days when seats were full to bursting on a Sunday and children filled buses bound for summer picnics. When the minister knew everyone's name because he visited them all. And woe betide anyone who uttered that bad word, change. We have taken it so far. Or not far enough to reach the promised land where used to and always done it that way, are allowed to die and be buried gracefully before we set off again in search of new life and new ways of meeting Christ amongst people. We have the Spirit to lead us forward, a teacher and leader who took it too far so that we might go all the way and be reconciled with him. Who will guide us forward? Show us where we can use our gifts to help others in their daily lives. Show us where we can use our time to benefit the world in which we live and contribute to improving life for all. Amen.
The Holy One calls us to holiness, calls us to wholeness, calls us to be wholehearted and wholly engaged in the world. The Holy One calls us to journey to places of milk and honey and places of thirst and hunger. As we journey, leave behind the worries and regrets, leave behind the rose-tinted glasses. Venture forward into places familiar and unknown. Share Christ's story of liberating, life-giving love. And may you stay safe in the way of Christ and may you be blessed by his Spirit, today and always. Amen.